Now for our next segment, which we call Quarantine Blues, we're speaking to a lady who has recovered from coronavirus in the UK and she's ready to tell us her story. Now, quick update. So in the UK, they have confirmed uh, a little over 60,000 cases and with 7,097 deaths. Now, thanks to God, a lady who, by the way, is Elizabeth Laye, uh, who recovered from the virus, she is... Uh, uh, she works with the British Airways, actually, and so we're going to go over and speak to her. Elizabeth, how are you? Good morning. Hi. Hi, Bella. Good morning. I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Tell us from the start, at what point did you notice that you may have had the virus? Was it through symptoms? Tell us. Um, it was through symptoms. So I work at the airport, like you mentioned, and so I went to work and it was it was a very busy day in connections and I came home and I started noticing that I was feeling shortness of breath mm. and then I started to cough so I thought I was thinking nothing of it but I thought to myself maybe I should ring the helpline which is 111 yeah so I spoke to my friend my colleague my friend and my colleague and I spoke to my sister and she said no do you know what you need to ring them because you might not have it but think about people you're putting at risk yeah so I called the 111 line and I told them about my symptoms mm. and they told me to self-isolate for 14 days. Well, it was seven days initially because I was alone in the house. Okay. Um, so that was fine. The Monday I was like, you know, there's nothing, nothing really wrong with me. I'm fine. Mm. Um, then comes Tuesday. Um, Tuesday it felt like I had a flu. My nose was blocked. Then it started running. I had a constant headache. No matter mm. how much paracetamol I took. Yeah. The headache would not go anywhere. Mm. Literally, it was constant headache. Then I started having body pains. Um, and then I completely lost my sense of smell and wow. taste. Like, completely. This was Couldn't day what? Day skin. nine? This No, this was day, day, day three in isolation. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So it all came, it all came on pretty quickly. Um, I, I had blocked nose. I was feeling down. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't sleep at night because I was in so much pain. Wow. And I can't. I couldn't take any other paracetamol, um, anything other than paracetamol, because they told me not to take ibuprofen or anything like that. Just keep to the paracetamol and vitamin C. Okay. So that's all I was taking. Were you able to eat at least? Um, I I really didn't wanted to eat because I couldn't taste anything. Okay. And it would really freak, it, it, it was freaking me out. So I spoke, I, doctors were calling me and checking in on me every few days. Mm. And they said that it's okay if I don't eat anything as long as I'm keeping my fluid, I'm taking in fluids and keeping hydrated and I should okay. be fine. But, you know, yeah. So you, you mentioned that you were home for what, seven days? Initially, seven days. And at the end of the seven days, my symptoms had gotten worse and not better. So I called them again and they said that then I need to stay indoor. I need to isolate for a further seven days. And wow. then after the seven days, if my symptoms have gone and then I need to stay away for another five days, symptom free. Mm. Did your symptoms disappear? Again. Yeah, they did. They did after, after 14 days. So. After 14 days. But they didn't give you yeah, any medicine days. necessarily. Did any health worker come home? To check on you? Well, yes. Um, I called one. I free, I completely freaked out one of the one Saturday night. Um, I couldn't smell, taste anything. I had a constant headache. I was feeling numb on the side, like the left side of my head down mm. to the left side of my body. So I called I called the ambulance mm. um, and the paramedics came um, and they took my blood pressure. And they, you know, they took their normal tests and they said that um, they can't they can't test me at the moment. So they didn't actually officially test me because at that point... Um, they said my my symptoms weren't severe enough and the government has, has stopped um, testing majority. They started again, but at that point, they stopped because they thought they capped it. Oh. So but they th started again. So I didn't, you didn't, I didn't get, get test tested. Okay. No, but, so then, then how do we they, confirm that you actually had it? Every single health worker that I spoke to mm -hmm. all said that these are these are clear symptoms of COVID, but the only thing they can't do is test me. Okay. And I was... From very frustrated. I can for imagine. Like two weeks thinking, you know what it is. So, like, what's going to happen? But yeah, could that be a reason why a lot of people are dying because they are waiting to get tested, and the test is not happening. They are also in isolation, waiting to see some more symptoms. I mean, um, they they have said that most most people that will get COVID will get the milder version of COVID mm -hmm. that can be taken care of by just, you know, taking drugs from over-the-counter pharmacies. So 
that's the vast majority of people. So, I mean, you, we're getting a large number of people getting COVID, but sometimes not all of them tend to need to go into hospital if they yeah. self-isolate and take paracetamol and keep their immune system up. Because they say that the paracetamol is sort of to kill the pain mm. that you feel and then to take vitamin C to boost your immune system. Yeah. So so then your immune system is able to fight it because there's at the moment there is no drug they can physically give okay. you. They, they can only treat the symptoms that you're okay. having. So you never went to the hospital. But when you were speaking no. to the health professionals, did they explain to you what could be the reason why they would have to pick you up if the symptoms got worse? What were they waiting to see before they realized um, it was severe? I think it was more the the shortness of breath. If you're struggling to breathe more, like if you can't get a, sen a full sentence out without losing your breath. But wouldn't that have been a little too late? I mean, uh, it, no. I mean, not not with everybody because if you're if you're missing shortness, they're pretty quick yeah. reacting when that happens. Okay. But it, I know what you mean. It's, 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 it's so you're waiting for something to happen mm -hmm. before it happens, which is something that did frustrate me a lot, and that's what got me very agitated and very, okay. you know, on the, like, so, to call so them to after come the in. So after the second week, when you started feeling better, did anybody come back to at least conduct a test to be sure that you, uh, you had fully recovered? No. You didn't um, have to go the, to the hospital the last, yourself? No. The last, because they, they tried to keep people away from the hospital because of all the patients they have there. The viral load is high out over there because, so even if you're, if you're at home, and your viral load is um, your viral load is low. You'll be mm. able to fight it by yourself. But if you then go into the hospital where the viral load is higher, so there's so many people there with COVID, and the the viral load is heavier, and you've got slight symptoms, it could worsen your symptoms. Mm. So their their thing was stay at home. If when your symptoms go away fully for a good time and you're not feeling anything anymore, okay, you're you're good to go. They said if I was still coughing, I can. I'm still good to go outside, but it's the headaches and the dizziness and okay. all that that I I had to make sure when. Oh, if when you were coughing, you could have gone outside. But I thought they said, you know, any droplet from your cough, your speech, even your breath. That's after. Could that's after 14 days. That's after the 14 days. Though. Oh, I if see. If you isolated for 14 days and all your other symptoms have gone and you're still coughing, that's fine because you can still cough. I see. Okay, so you were home for two weeks. That means that you. Yeah. You probably touched your table, your chair, your bed, and all of that. Have they come to Everything. disinfect? No, I disinfected my house myself. Oh, you so did? So every day I would disinfect my house. So when I wake up in the morning, I would disinfect my house. So Because I was thinking to myself, if I'm getting better, yeah. um, I need to, every day I need to disinfect to get mm -hmm. rid of whatever was there yesterday. So exactly. I was disinfecting myself. And so my sister would mm. buy me things and leave it outside the door, and then I would, oh, um, so there was no contact with any friend, family mm. member, nothing. No, and honestly, no, it has such a massive impact on your mental health. Literally, I was in my house by myself, no human contact yeah. for fourteen days, apart from when the paramedic came and came into the house. Every time my sister would come over to bring me medicine or to top up anything for me, she would drop it at the door, press the doorbell, and leave, and then she would leave. Wow. This is serious. Yeah. What about your workplace? I mean, I'm sure that they knew you had symptoms as well. Was there, oh, yeah. so, were there other people who may have also started showing symptoms? Do you know if anything was done about it? I mean, I, I did hear a few of my colleagues that got it and they had it more severe, so they've had to be in, in hospital. Um, wow. One of them is, is, been, is out of hospital now and he's recovering at home. Okay. So it is, it, I mean, a lot, I, I do know of a few people that at my workplace that did contact it. Okay. And um, one of them that was in hospital, I did work quite closely with a very close friend mm. the day before I started feeling symptoms. So yeah. Are you allowed to give information about this person? I just want to know, like, how severe was it? Was the person in the hospital for a long period of time? Was the person on a ventilator and all of that? Do you have details? I mean, I don't have, I don't have details. Okay. And I, okay. Would, I wouldn't say it's my place to say, but I just know that he, he, he was okay. quite sick and he was in the hospital. Well, we're happy that you've recovered at home. And this is good news for a lot of people to at least also know that 100%. you don't have to be that scared about it because you can also recover. And yeah. I'm happy that you're doing very well. And so I wish you the best of luck. I know that you're still under lockdown. And so basically, you can't necessarily move out as much. No. Okay. But exactly. it's, okay, it's fine. But stay safe. And thank hopefully we'll talk to you again some other time so you can update us more on what's happening. Sure. Okay. Thank sure. you so much. And Thanks. that is um, Elizabeth, pardon me, Elizabeth Nate. She works with the British, Lai, pardon me, Elizabeth Lai. She works with the British Airways. 
and she also contracted the virus, but she stayed home and she recovered and now she's doing perfectly well. And so we're happy about that. And this is good news for you as well. Ah, what do you think about it? Well, that's great. That should tell you that staying at home indeed helps. It works. We keep saying stay at home, stay at home. The more you move, the more the virus spreads as well. But 